How's it going, guys? And welcome back to yet another episode of Couch Coach Sports. I'm your boy Bjorn, and with us once again is my co manager, Dean. How's it going, brother? I'm great, bro. Obviously, I'm fantastic. What a way to start the week, bro. I know, no better way than a Boca victory, eh? What an awesome way to start exactly. the win, especially uh, to start the week, especially with a win like that. I thought the Boca were exceptional. We might not have scored when these flashy, except the Kirkley Orange try was very flashy. But we might not have scored yeah. an exuberant amount of tries or anything like that. But I thought our performance was perfect. I thought we dominated the, the Scottish from the get-go. Every facet, we were ahead of them. I was very proud of the boys. What's your feeling? Exactly that, bro. The main thing, what I, what I love about the game is that we conceded zero tries, bro. That just shows mm. that we, we, we sort of out our update. basics first. Exactly. Our, our yeah. attitude is correct and we're focusing on the right things and we're playing then. The, we look at those flashy moments. Those are set up by a strong, mm. by a strong forward back going forward. Marnie, he, oh, we'll talk about the kicking later. Yeah. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get fantastic. to that. His performance was fantastic because his his entire game is just going forward, going forward. His he, platform. He looked set smooth, up didn't he? Eh? He looked so smooth. He looked like a World Cup player playing in the match. Kicking, obviously, we'll get exactly. to that. But everything else, he looked like almost perfect. Exactly, bro. He just looked like he he was controlling the game perfectly. I mm. saw Sia Colisi also spoke about it after after the game. He spoke about how well Mani controlled the game. And I'm, bro, that's all you want. That's Everyone mm. was firing. I, I don't particularly think anyone had a bad game, except for no. one guy we'll talk about later. <laughs> but I was, I, was, I was very, very, very impressed. No, I was also. I, I was, like, like you say, I thought our basics were very good. I thought the structures we had in place was um, excellent. Um, I also think man marking, we were... We had them, uh, we counted them 1v1. I was very, very impressed yeah. with um, our performance in general. I thought we closed out the space out wide. We nullified Duan. And I mean, Duan is arguably the best yeah. in, in the world at the moment. To nullify him in the way, in the fashion we did was excellent. Uh, Cheslin was outstanding as per usual. I thought he was good yeah. on the counter. Kirtley is another one electrifying my tr top try score of, this, of the tournament. So happy to see him at least get one. Did you see that child quickly yeah. though? The money Livok no no look kick cross kick. Oof. And it's, that's quite tasty, yeah. That's quite tasty. The Odin, my bro, the Odin. <laughs> the sad news that's though, so before we go on. What did, yeah. did you see Eben? Unfortunately Eben got I went saw, down with an injury. Bro, I saw. Limping off I in the first twenty five minutes. That that can't be good news for the book, eh? That's definitely not, bro. I hope it's not serious, bro. I really do hope so. But to walk off that earlier, it may be a, a precautionary thing. I hope it's a precautionary thing. But we'll have to see. They haven't released any news about that one yet. Eh? Nothing, nothing, nothing. I thought RG um, came in and did a good job. But obviously, when you lose someone like Irwin, you lose that, that aggressiveness, you lose that size, you lose that power, especially when it comes to to the breakdown. But having someone like Irwin clear rucks is, is, is wonderful for the booker. Because when you have someone exactly, like Irwin no. hitting in the, at the rucks... It takes an impact. It takes a big toll on your opponent's bodies. And after an 80-minute match, having someone like him on your side is is imperative. Exactly, bro. And his leadership, he, it just brings mm. so much to the team, you know. I'm glad that we, we, we are very lucky that we have RG that came in and... We yeah. stopped. We stopped that, that role. Dog. Exactly. Fulfilled that role very efficiently. But we're very lucky. It's a, it's a bit of a concern with Eben because now RG is going to be main man and who mm. backs him up? Do you know what I mean? Exactly. You got Marvin. Might be, Marvin, might, you got in the wings. Yeah, Marvin. And he's also more than capable. Player. He's been a part of the setup for how many years now? Five, six years? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, again, even it's not somebody we want to lose. We're talking about the best lock in the world. Bro. So, Agreed. Let's, Agreed. Let's, let's all hope that he's okay. But, yeah, so, kicking off uh, tactically, what did you mm. notice from the beginning of the game to, towards the end? Well, one thing I specifically noticed was Another thing that's been quite common at this World Cup has been the high kicks, up and unders. Yeah. I see a lot of yeah. us, especially what we did as well in the beginning stages. So the first early 20 minutes, we saw Marnie waste the ball up a few times, targeting the outside backs of yeah. the Scots, especially right just before the, the, the outside of the 22 area. So yeah, um, I can see kicking, but you can see it works though. It's definitely a, a, an effective tool. You saw it in the England game with George Ford. I thought Dan Bigger had an excellent kicking game last night again. So I think the kicking game is what we're going to see once again dominate the World Cup. And yourself? I think that's the main thing is that we're kicking um, with intent, with a good chase. Mm. and a, Attacking a, a kicks as well. with our kicking. Exactly. Mm. A good plan with what we're doing. 
not playing too much in our territory, which is important in the World Cup, mm. especially against the bigger mm. teams. Playing the ball in the right areas, and once you're in those areas, your attacking kicks being accurate uh, with a very good chase, and everyone on the same page as to what the Slav or number nine's plan is with the kicks. I saw also what we were doing, especially talking about the kicks. Now, we were t- we were targeting the secondary ball, so we would have a runner, obviously yeah. chase the kick. If he's not able to catch it, we always have someone behind that can play the secondary exactly. ball. And I think that was a very effective tool, like say for gaining ground and just um, minimizing the, the space that your opponent has by taking it through the air. It was very good, very good planning from Rassia and Jacques there for sure. Mm. Uh, did you happen to see uh, Rassia's lights, bro? <laughs> yeah, the traffic lights. Yeah, it's a clever plan, bro. 2006 cheetahs all over again. Do you remember that in the, the final, the Coca yeah, final against the Bulls exactly. a few years ago? When he was sitting on the roof mixing the lights. He's like a you know, light technician <laughs> slash DJ, bro. <laughs> Just flashing up the, the strobe light. I, I'd love to know like the coding for that. Red light. Okay, see. <laughs> and you know, everyone, you know what happens. Probably someone, you know, there's like one player, probably like the tallest one, from Ku- uh, Bossy or someone that sees that. And they probably point. They're like, oh shit, look up, guys, look up. It's time. And then Rassi is busy sitting there. <laughs> I laughed, bro. I laughed uh, because uh, I saw Vili, like, uh, like yeah. he, uh, he was the link between that light and and, and the field, bro. Uh, I just was he the, the messenger? Yeah, I just imagine before the game, like, Vili, listen, you're gonna get ten minutes, but for the game, you the light man, okay? You got two <laughs> jobs, Vili. Really. Two jobs. Uh, speaking about him, bro, when he came on, I was a little bit disappointed, bro. It was I agree. the one kick in the gold zone he tried to chip over. I don't know what mm. the plan is there, bro. Just Especially in the World Cup, zone. just play safe. Exactly, bro. He, all he had to do, we in there, literally on their five, bro. Just pass to somebody and set it up if we can't uh, score. Set up the phases and it's, they will break somewhere. You don't need to force the mm. play in, the, in that situation. Maybe if we, if we uh, a few points up uh, or a bit uh, deeper in the field in towards our territory you can mm. throw up a kick into space but there bro I don't see why I'm it's harping on about one thing but no but it's obviously a player you can't be doing things it's like obviously that. a player that's um, fighting for his position getting replaced by Damien in the first World Cup game yeah sets a signal for you that obviously Damien's going to be preferred for the rest of the tournament as well so obviously Willie's Exactly. Probably playing for his for his life at the moment. He probably wants to feature. I know we we've been the Springboks have been talking about a long time about the squad effect and everyone has a role to play. But I mean, as an individual level, you want to play every game. You want to play as much as you can, especially if you're in the twilight of your career. Like. Exactly. But anyway, back to the poker. What I didn't like what they would, what they started making a few too many errors in the gold zone. If you mm. the gold zone obviously being close in the twenty two close to their line. Early mm. on, I thought we could have got a few more tries in that game and maybe got the bonus point. Talking about tries and, and almost tries, did you see Grant Williams? Oh, the speed on that boy. Man. He is unbelievable. He almost, that would have been tried the tournament game one, done and dusted. I, was, I heard his stories, movement. guys were telling me. Yeah, I heard stories, guys were telling me that he, like, his 40 meter times at testing are like, the highest in the Sharks. And like one of yeah, the highest in the book. He's the fastest in the book team for sure. I think they've even mentioned it a few times that he's the fastest in the book team. Bro, he cruises, bro. I just I wish when Russell didn't get his ankle, bro. That would have been Jeez. the child of the tournament in, in game one. Definitely. <laughs> and, and he got him by uh, the skin of his teeth, eh? Like fingernail stuff. Uh, um, let's go back to the forwards, bro. That for me it was one, a, a very dominant performance. But Set I enjoyed the dominance this, uh, as well. Exactly. Just before half time, though. We gave away two penalties, scrum penalties. Mm-hmm. That was a bit uh, wor- not worrying. I think Francie and uh, Kitsov were maybe a little bit much tired. So uh, th- that was one thing. But as soon as we came back on, there was a quick uh, second half try from Wait. Steph, Peter Steph. I like that a lot, bro. That ju- that's, that just pulls you away and sees the game as well. completely. Exactly. The nice first nice was, build up and then like more. I, yeah, I didn't for, think the first half was so tough. I think you made a good point earlier when you mentioned about the gold zone. I think we like we said. Yeah. I, I thought we dominated the match, but then it was those last little, the last pass, the last little movement is where we we dropped it. Exactly. Yeah, mm. for sure. And I think coming into the second half, it's definitely probably something that they focused on in talking in the halftime talk, saying, "Listen, gold organ conversion is mm. bad. Fix that." And to come exactly. out quickly in the second half and and fix it, that's that's brilliant. I like it. I like mm. that a lot. 
it's good though that you mentioned the forwards because I also think that obviously the forwards that's how you set up your backline. That's what creates the magic moments. That's what sets up the forward momentum as well. The set play dominance yeah. that we had was very very impressive. So out of our own, you mentioned the two lost scrums, but we won five at five out of seven. Line outs eleven out of twelve. Yeah. Five scr- five scrum turnovers and four line out steals. I think that's true. I think Correct. that was an excellent return for our forwards, eh? Exactly, and what's even uh, what impresses me a lot too is when they changed the front row after about fifty minutes. The first two scrums after that, two mm. uh, two penalties for us. Mm. And the our subs. Is, is, That's is what I was exactly going to say. The, the the subs can come on. Trevor, Ox, and Bonki. They're all elite. Yeah. I've already mentioned in our predictions videos. We probably have the two best front rows in the world, and they exactly. both play for the Boca. Exactly. With the Scottish, mm. uh, anything you want to comment on their team and their probably their future prospects for this tournament? They can this because in Ireland they're so close and they play each other so much. There's always an op- the opportunity for an upset because the teams know each other so well. But I, yeah. I don't see it. The, the Irish themselves, obviously they played Romania, a tier two team, maybe even tier three. They put them to the sword. I thought the Irish as a as a package looked very impressive. So. I still back them to beat the Scots. So for me, after this loss for South Africa, I think it quali- I think it guarantees us our qualification because, irrespective of what happens between Ireland and us, we're gonna beat Tonga and we're gonna beat Romania. So I think this with that yeah. victory we've secured our qualification. For Scotland, they're gonna need to beat Ireland. That's the only exactly. that's the only hope. Yeah, they're gonna have to pull something out there, the rabbit out the hat there. Bro. It's mm. good. At times, they definitely look good. I thought Trent Russell was great. It was brilliant, especially mm. in a situation where he's moving backwards the whole time. He kicked tactically well. He was, uh, but he had his little dangerous moments. It led the game pretty well. Yeah, yeah I, I was yeah. impressed. With, but I think we contained them pretty well. You know, it's mm. not as if they any of them had bad games, which is a good thing for us to understand that these guys didn't have a bad game. We just mm. played so much better. I agree with you. I think offensively and defensively, we dominated all facets. Uh, and I think that's what you can say, not disrespectfully, but that's what made Scotland look so average yesterday. For a fifth ranked team in the world, we did yeah. quite well. Exactly, bro. We definitely did a fantastic game. The next one we have to look at bro, is the, the kicking. Uh, oh. the kicking for posts. Money left that was, eight points. Yeah. Fuff left three. That was the big negative. 11 points left on we the spoke, field. And we spoke about this before in our predictions video regarding the kicking with Marnie and I was a bit concerned with yeah. it. I don't... Yeah. Just because he has one bad day at the office though, doesn't mean that he will continue this kicking throughout the tournament. The only problem is it's been a... It's happened before. So, exactly. the scary thing is Fuff is definitely not the answer to Marnie's problems. So, having Fuff as the replacement kick, I remember as a Lions fan myself, he has kicked before. He does a pretty decent job at it, but he's not reliable. He's not the guy that you're going to trust to kick for you in the World Cup final, I'd say. Exactly. What what worried me about mine is kicking, bro. It's not like, you know, shaving the upright or mm. something like that. These were bad misses, bro. This is the worst. Those were some of the, the worst misses I've seen in a while from an international level kicker. It's disappointing, bro, because, I mean, he won man of the match with his performance on the field. So he's almost in that position of they cannot leave him out, but mm. they cannot rely on that's ex- him for probably what. That's exactly what I said during the predictions video. His, yeah. his style of play, I would 100% pick in the team. He, he's consistently, he's, he's a front foot player. He he looks for a pass, he looks for space, he looks to attack the, the main line. I like it. But the problem is you yeah. need someone for the World Cup that can kick to post. Even if it was a different position, you could have the same team, but if your goal kicker was 100% as a prop, no, no. Exactly. I, mean, I wonder why Damien didn't get a chance to kick before Faf. Maybe he's just um, in training wasn't looking good at all. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like, had it been a situation where Damien steps up and gets 100%, the, uh, my heart would feel a little Switch. bit more at ease with this situation, you know? Exactly. It seems like they just threw Faf in there for like almost like have a go. Let's see if you can do it. If you can do it, great. But he's not like yeah. the go-to kicker. Like you'd say, you'd rather have someone like a Damien that has kicked before, has kicked at provincial level, yeah. at high school level. You know, he's been kicking almost his whole life. So it's one of those situations where it, it is a very concerning thing, especially when you get into the knockout stages when games are close. Points are valuable. Yeah, bro. It's, it's such a... Uh, uh unneeded situation bro it's like mm. you know you look at the game and you think what are the negatives and then you, 
in a different situation you look at a negative and think okay we can fix it and now you look at this as our only negative and you think how are we going to fix this mm. <laughs> you know exactly because it's, it's not like, like you can magically yeah. just make someone a kick overnight it's like a confidence exactly. thing there's so much to it i think it might be just that it might just be the confidence bro we, i like I said before we're talking about a player who hasn't played in a lot of test matches mm. you know he's the, under the pump in that regard about his kicking. first world cup as well exactly and a full stadium the stadium was buzzing by the way yeah and you know it's Marseille stadium it's a beautiful stadium eh Marseille beautiful stadium bro Definitely what a what a, what a location to play rugby in what a venue exactly exactly yeah but I hope I hope that he can sort that I, I, I assume it's a mental thing because he's got all the, the resources around him to fix his his, his kicking mm. technically I, 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 I believe so. I mean, in the spin box, they leave no stone unturned, bro. You look at the lights and small things like that. And this big stone is definitely one, not one they're going to leave un, unturned at all. I agree with you. But it's luckily, for whoever's kicking, on Sunday we face in Romania. So they're probably going to get a lot yeah. of opportunity to practice in their kicks. I would still, yeah, I would exactly still personally, so. I would back Marnie. I would keep him there because you have to build his confidence. Yeah. If you drop him now, and you, exactly. I think even by putting Fuff in a little bit, unless it was like a planned thing before and where they were like, okay, if you miss one or two kicks and you feel uncomfortable, we're going to put Fuff in. I think that's a big hit exactly. on someone's confidence. I think it's a big blow. So hopefully he can, he can jump, he can bounce back and get back to his old yeah. ways. And, and luckily he did win man of a match, you know, so yeah. I, I, no, excellent, performance. So I think he's, excellent performance. I think his confidence level is nice enough, but he's probably just got that in the back of his head that my kicking wasn't the greatest, you know, mm. my kicking And with the bad. media, you know, the media likes to hunt people out for kicking, especially the like African yeah. flags have been hunted out for years for kicking. If they miss one or two, it's almost like exactly. the world's ending. Exactly. Yeah. And especially when we have so little negatives from our game, yeah. they're going to... They're going to choose one, and we all know what it's going to be. Yeah, no, I think I but think it was a great thing from us. Yeah, exactly. Excellent bro. performance from the Boca Romania up next, though. Thoughts? It's just going to be a walk in the park. I'll probably play, put Eight. a B team on, can let everyone Eight. get uh, yeah, their get minutes. A but again, I'll, uh, a Springbok B team that can put eighty past to Romania mm. easily. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I also think it's going to be a big score. So I'm excited for the game. We'll get back to that one when it's the time. Awesome. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like. Leave comments down in the comment section. We'll see you again for another episode of Couch Coach Sports. It's been your boys. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, guys.